Bionicle Chronicles is the first book series set in the LEGO Bionicle universe. Although it was published in 2003, it summarizes events that occurred in the first story arc that began in 2001. When the second story arc began in 2004, the Chronicles series was replaced with the Bionicle Adventures series. However, as Adventures is almost exclusively told in flashbacks, the events following those in Chronicles are told in the third book series, Bionicle Legends. It tells of the adventures of the Toa Mata who later become the Toa Nuva on the island of Mata Nui. Their mission is to awaken the universe's sleeping guardian, the great spirit Mata Nui, but first they must free the island from the grip of the evil Makuta. Sources. The main events of the Chronicles story arc are told in The Four Bionicle Chronicles books Tale of the Toa, Beware the Borok, Makuta's Revenge, and Tales of the Masks. Issues 1–15 of the Bionicle comic book, which was distributed to LEGO Club members and later published online at Bionicle.com. However, they are no longer available at the official site. A direct-to-video movie and its novelization, Bionicle, The Mask of Light The Mata Nui online game, available for download from Bionicle.com while the major events are considered canonical, a number of the details are not. The video game Lego Bionicle, also known as Tales of the Tohunga or Quest for the Toa. There were other games released that take place during the Chronicles storyline, but they have several continuity mistakes and are not considered canonical. The following sources provide background information and tell side stories taking place during Bionicle Chronicles. Bionicle, the official guide. A series of online animations, published at Bionicle.com. However, they are no longer available on the official site. The Mata Nui Online Game 2, playable at Bionicle.com. While the major events are considered canonical, a number of the details are not. The legend continues. Interactive story at mascoflight.com Topic Plot Summary Topic Prologue Source Tales of the Tohunga Video game for as long as any of the Matoran could remember, the Master of Shadows, Makuta, had made the island of Mata Nui a place of darkness, enslaving the Rahi wildlife and sending them to attack the villagers. The wise Taraga had told tales of mighty heroes called the Toa, who would come and free the island from Makuta's grip, and the Matoran were waiting for that day. Eventually, the Makuta carried out his boldest attack yet and had the Rahi kidnap the Taraga. When a wandering Matoran, Takua, learned of the kidnappings, he took it upon himself to rescue the elders. In the process, he also recovered the six Toa stones that were scattered about the island. 
When Takua was instructed by the rescued Taraga to place the Toa stones on the Kini Nui Temple's Suva shrine, the stones shot a beam of light that launched him to the edge of the island, and when he came to, he saw a strange canister on the shore and a set of footprints in the sand leading away from it. Tale of the Toa Sources, Bionicle Chronicles No. 1, Bionicle Comic Hash 1-3, Mata Nui Online Games X Great Heroes were summoned to the island of Mata Nui to awaken the Great Spirit, Mata Nui, who had been put to sleep by his evil brother Makuta. This would free its inhabitants, the Matoran and Rahi wild beasts, from the Makuta's dark influence. These Toa did not remember or know anything about their quest, except for vague memories and their own names. Therefore, they had to be taught the legends by the Matoran and their wise leaders, the Taraga. The Toa's first task was to collect the Kanohi Masks of Power to gain new powers with which to defeat Makuta. The quest was not easy the Kanohi were hidden in places that were all but impossible to reach, and or guarded by Rahi that Makuta had infected and enslaved to serve his evil will. After many perils, the Toa managed to successfully collect the Kanohi, and then combine them into even more powerful golden masks, before descending into Makuta's underground lair, the Mangaya. There they met new dangers first the powerful Manus crabs and then the Shadow Toa before confronting Makuta himself. He appeared to them as a small Matoran, although rusty and pitted, and claimed that he was one of those the Toa had sworn to protect. Once the Toa decided to fight him anyway, he fused with the swirling mass of parts that were floating above them and took on a vortex form. After a long battle, the Toa emerged, victorious. Makuta was gone or so the Toa thought. Topic. Beware the Borok Sources, Bionicle Chronicles No. 2, Bionicle Comic Hash 4-9, Online Animations The Toa had barely reached the surface of the island of Mata Nui, where the Matoran villagers were preparing a victory party to celebrate the Toa's ostensible defeat of Makuta, when they were thrust into a new adventure. One of the villagers from Tahu's village of Ta Koro breathlessly ran up to them, then collapsed, muttering only one unknown word over and over, Borok. Swarms of mechanical beings, the Borok tore through Mata Nui in their quest to destroy everything on the island trees, ice, lava, even mountains. The swarms did not hesitate to defend themselves against those who would deter them from their strange mission, even if it were the Toa. The Toa, with help from the Taraga, slowly pieced together the mystery of the Borok, the connection with the repulsive creatures known as Krana, the fact that the Borok were mechanical and not really alive, and the way to stop the swarms. Now the Toa were in a race against time, to stop the Borok, the Toa had to collect the eight types of Krana in each color. This would unlock the entrance to the lair of the mysterious Barag, the queens of the swarms. The Barag would have to be defeated in order to stop the mad advance of the Borok. This the Toa did, along the way, they discovered the Exo Toa, six powerful suits of armor that had been hidden underground for Mata Nui knows how long. 
After being forced to shed the suits, the Toa managed to defeat the Barag by combining their powers and forming a cage of solid protodermis around the twins, entrapping them and cutting off their connection to the Krana, which they controlled telepathically. But as they were trapped, one of the Barag uttered a warning, "'You cannot imagine what you have unleashed. After defeating the Barag, the Toa were submerged into a mysterious substance known as energized protodermis. They evolved into newer, more powerful Toa with increased elemental powers, more powerful Kanohi masks, and stronger armor. Tahu decided to rename the team as the Toa Nuva. Makuta's Revenge Sources, Bionicle Chronicles No. 3, Bionicle Comic Hash 10-12, Online Animations But the new heroes were angered that the Taraga, who obviously knew of the legends of the Bohrok invasion, did not tell them anything about the legends beforehand. This caused them to wonder if the Taraga knew more than they were letting on. Whether or not this was true would remain to be seen. Also, the Toa Nuva were still as fiercely independent as ever. This caused them to split up, although Gali Nuva had a premonition that something bad would happen if they did. Not very surprisingly, Gali Nuva was proved right. A squad of six new, elite Borok, known as Borok Kal, soon emerged with a bang. Their first task, accomplished quite easily, was to steal the Toa Nuva's Nuva symbols. They were necessary for the freeing of the Borok queens, the Barag and also had the side effect of making the Toa Nuva's elemental powers along with their natural resistance to their elements vanish. Now forced to depend on each other more than ever, as well as collect the more powerful Kanohi Nuva, the Toa Nuva tried to match the Borok Kal's strength with their own, failing miserably every time. Eventually, the Toa Nuva pieced together the Borok Kal's goal as well, release the Barag twins, which would cause the Borok which were now doing repair duty in the villages to resume their task of destruction. The Toa Nuva followed the Borok Kal back into the nests, where they witnessed the Exo Toa's demise at the magnetic shields of Galok Kal. Just as the Borok Kal were about to fit the Nuva symbols into the Nuva cube, Tahu Nuva summoned the Kanohi Vahi, the Mask of Time, and used it power to freeze the Borok Kal in time. However, as Tahu did so the Krana Kal turned silver and began projecting a force field that shielded the Kal from any further harm. Finally, acting on a desperate plan devised by Gali Nuva, the Toa Nuva mentally reached out to their own symbols. The Nuva symbols activated and began feeding raw energy into the Borok Kal, to the point where each of the Kal's powers overloaded and destroyed them. With their recovered Nuva symbols, their regained elemental powers, and their Kanohi Nuva, the Toa Nuva headed for the surface once again. <laughs> Tales of the Masks Sources, Bionicle Chronicles No. 4 There are various short stories of the Toa Nuva's adventures during this time, including Tahu Nuva's Swinging on Vines, Taraga Nakama's Betrayal of Gali Nuva, Anua Nuva's Single-Handed Defeat of Two Manus Crabs, and the horrifying conflict with the frightful Rahi hybrid known as the Rahi Nui, which Taraga Vakama knew from the past.
Topic: <laughs> Mask of Light. Sources: Mask of Light movie and its novelization. Bionicle comic hash 13 to 15. Marta Nui online game 2. The legend continues. Interactive story Shortly after the defeat of the Borok Kal, the Taraga decided it was time that the Matoran learn the secret of how to rebuild their bodies into stronger forms. They also took advantage of the time of peace to declare an island-wide Kolhi tournament. Taraga Nokama made a surprising choice and selected Halley to be part of the Ga Koro team in the tournament. Halley immediately began traveling to different villages for training. Just before the championship match, the Taraga held a council about whether the Toa Nuva should be told about Metru Nui. They each told their own tale of the Toa's struggles to claim the Kanohi Nuva masks to support their points either for or against, but after Taraga Vakama tells of their fight against the Rahi Nui, which might have been easier if they had known about the beast beforehand, the Taraga agree that the Toa should be informed once the tournament ends. Meanwhile, Takua entered a forbidden lava cave in order to investigate a strange stone totem. After he accidentally drops the totem into the lava, the stone melts away to reveal a golden kanohi mask inside. Toa Tahu, after seeing the mask, tells Takua to bring the mask to the Taraga, after the Kolhi match. Takua and Jala barely make it to the stadium in time for the championship game between the Kolhi teams of Ta Koro, Po Koro, and Ga Koro. Despite the fact that Po Matoran are known for their skill in the sport it's Halley and Maku who win for Ga Koro. But the Kolhi match is quickly forgotten as Takua accidentally drops the glowing mask right in the center of the stadium. Afterwards, Nokama translates the inscriptions on the inside of the mask and announces that it is the Avoki Mask of Light, destined to be worn by a Toa of Light in a time of darkness. However, this Toa will not simply arrive like the Nuva did, it must be found by its herald. Tahu suggests that Jala is the herald because the Avoki's light shone on him. Jala wants Takua to own up to being the herald, as he was the one to find the mask, but Takua instead supports Tahu's suggestion and the Taraga mistakenly recognize Jala as the herald. Upset at Takua's dodging of responsibility, Jala has the Taraga appoint Takua as his traveling companion. The two set out from Ta Koro the next day with Takua's pet usul crab Puku, counting on the mask to shine most brightly in the direction they are supposed to go. However, Makuta fears the Toa of Light and sends out three of his Rakshi to claim the mask. The Rakshi arrive at Ta Koro and decimate the village, with Lerik poisoning Tahu in the process. The Ta Matoran are able to escape with their lives, but Ta Koro sinks into the Lake of Fire and is utterly destroyed. The Rakshi follow the trail of Jala and Takua and catch up with them in the icy drifts of Ko Wahi, where Toa Kopaka is able to freeze them solid in a lake. But Makuta would not stop so easily, and he releases three more Rakshi. He also appears to Takua and warns that if the Mask of Light is not handed over, Jala will die. Takua refuses, but is so shaken by the encounter that he chooses to abandon the search so that Jala's life would be safe. 
While Jala keeps looking for the Tower of Light, Takua eventually ends up in Onu Koro, but when Makuta's new team of Rakshi shows up there, he realizes that they aren't hunting the mask, they're hunting the real herald, him. The Toa show up to fight the Rakshi, but Kurik uses his power described by the Makuta as anger amongst themselves to turn Toa Tahu against Toa Gali. Kopaka is able to flash freeze Tahu and Takua escapes the Rakshi, but Onu Koro is heavily damaged in a cave in. Regretting his decision to abandon Jala, Takua tracks him down and finally admits that he should have accepted the title of Herald from the start. He rejoins the search and the two get going, but when night falls, the three frozen Rakshi are able to free themselves. By morning, Lewa Nuva, Kopaka Nuva, and Gali Nuva have assembled to cure Tahu Nuva of his poisonous affliction. The Toa Nuva summon all of their healing energies, and Tahu Nuva is relieved of his madness, if still weakened. Kopaka Nuva departs without a word. It is evening again when Takua, Jala, and Puku arrive at the Kini Nui. Takua is reluctant to believe that so obvious a site is the hiding place of the seventh Toa, and has stronger second thoughts when all six Rakshi appear to take the Mask of Light once and for all. Fortunately, three Toa Nuva arrive on the scene followed by Kopaka Nuva and the rest of the Toa Nuva to defend the Matoran from their demise. For the first time, the Toa Nuva stand united against the Rakshi and are successful, but not before Jala dies at the hands of Turek while trying to protect Takua. Distraught over his friend's death, Takua turns new thoughts over in his head and discovers the seventh Toa, in himself. Takua dons the Mask of Light and undergoes a dramatic transformation into Takanuva, Toa of Light. With that, he finishes off Turek and joins the Toa Nuva on their way back to meet Taragavakama. It is decided that Takanuva shall ride a krata powered vehicle constructed from the parts of the defeated Rakshi, the Usanui, to Makuta's underground lair alone. Takanuva descends into the tunnels beneath the Kini Nui and arrives at the door of Mangaya. Upon entering, Hali the Chronicler, having stowed away on board the Usanui, is ordered to summon all of the Matoran of Mata Nui underground to witness the final confrontation between Toa and the Master of Shadows. It is not long before Makuta comes forth from the shadows of his lair and challenges Takanuva to a Kolhi match. In this more dangerous version of the game, the object was not to score a point, but to hit the other player. Takanuva successfully dodged every attack Makuta attempted. Meanwhile, Hali convinced the Toa Nuva and the Taraga to go down to Makuta's lair and help Takanuva. When they arrived, Makuta destroyed the entrance, making it impossible to leave. This made Takanuva furious. As Makuta once again hurled the energy Kolhi ball at Takanuva, Takanuva attempted his new move, a special technique wherein he performed a somersault in midair while throwing the Kolhi ball. This succeeded in slamming the Makuta into the wall. Makuta, angered, rose from the floor, intending to kill Takanuva outright. As he issues his threats, he remarks that his duty is to the Mask of Shadows. Takanuva makes the utterly radical suggestion of seeing behind that mask. He pulls it off, revealing a light. They fall into a pool of protodermis, to later emerge as a single being, Takutanuva. 
This entity, having Makuta's power, Takanuva's purpose, and a mask combined of theirs, opens the gate that leads TP Metru Nui and allows the Matoran and Taraga to pass beneath it. As Hali, bearing Jala's mask, passes him, the Takutanuva stops her and resurrects Jala. Weakened, he permits the gate to shut, crushing him, and the Avoki slides out from under the door. The Matoran enter a chamber, in which is marked with the symbol of their three guiding virtues on the floor. Taraga Vakama, seeking to awaken Mata Nui, places Hali on the sign of unity, Jala on the sign of duty, and the Mask of Light on the sign of destiny. In a pillar of light, Takanuva was resurrected. The lost city of Metru Nui, along with the destiny of the Matoran, is then revealed. <inaudible> Epilogue With Makuta seemingly defeated, the Taraga were finally able to begin telling the story of their past lives as Toa Metru in the ancient Metru Nui, city of legends. <laughs>